This is what I will be doing Sunday about 5.30 after Clint Dempsey scores the first goal of the game against Portugal. Ole, 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 ole. <laughs> USA, USA. Joining me for my the segment I've been looking forward to more than anything else all morning long, Ty Kiao, St. Louis soccer great. How you doing today, Ty? Well, I'm pretty pumped as well for the game on Sunday. There's some other big games between now and Sunday, not for the U.S. team, but for the tournament overall. We're talking 62 games in about 33 days, so plenty of high-level competitive soccer. There, there has been there has been some some tremendous tremendous goals. Tim Cahill for Australia had a, had a, just a beautiful shot uh, yesterday uh, in in that country's loss. Uh, of course, the uh, Robin Van Persie goal, which which probably is still the goal of the match, uh, uh, the goal of the tournament so far. Uh, one of the uh, games I'm really interested in, in seeing and hopefully getting part of today is is Italy Costa Rica. What do you expect to see out of that game? Well, I mean, Costa Rica surprised a lot of people, no question about that. Uh, Italy is a a world power and has won the World Cup you know, several times. So, you know, Costa Rica is the underdog on paper, but uh, you know, what a performance uh, they had in their opening game. So it's all the group play right now is gritty, getting down to the nitty-gritty. Who gets on the plane back home or who gets to stay into the knockout stage? And uh, in the knockout stages, there's 16 teams of the 32 teams left. But I've been hugely impressed overall with the speed of play, a lot of concern about heat and humidity, but I think the fact that many of these games have been played in a downpour uh, has kept the conditions cool. I think it also has favored the attacking players. Uh, defenders have to react, and their footing is not the best. Uh, so we've seen a World Cup now, I think, still averaging more goals per game since any World Cup going back to 1958. And if I count correctly, I think there's been at least six games uh, where teams came from behind to win uh, in group play. So really exciting stuff. And and the pace of play, uh, again, due to the cooler conditions, I think with, with the rain uh, helping, uh, the pace of play has been phenomenal. The, the U.S., of course, had some, some injury problems in its first game, the, the, the hammy to, to Josie Altador that has him out for Sunday and probably for longer, the, the hammy to Matt Beasler, the, the hammy or, or uh, uh, hip pointer to Alejandro Bedoya. It, was that weather-related, do you think, or is that, you know, there's at least some commentators out there that – question the way Jurgen Klinsmann trains his team. Well, Tony, I, I, it, it's hard to say on, on injuries so many factors uh, you know, can uh, be a part of it. I, I think potentially two main things, on those hamstring injuries especially, uh, perhaps overtraining, just you know, you're trying so hard to be totally ready for the pace of play that, that you have to be ready for at a World Cup. Uh, you know, the guys might have overdone it a little bit in, in the, uh, the last couple of weeks leading into the World Cup. Uh, also, psychological pressure, I think, uh, can factor into an injury. You know, they, the guys just want to win so bad that then they're pushing so hard. Uh, and you, you have to also uh, factor in just the intensity of play when you get to a World Cup. I mean, you play year in, year out in, in a top league, let's say even in England or in Europe. It's not the same as a World Cup. The World Cup's only once every four years, and it takes on that much more magnitude in terms of pressure and intensity of, of physical effort. Uh, Clint Dempsey uh, had his nose broken and courageously uh, played on through the rest of the match, I think, pretty effectively, despite not really being able to breathe through his nose and I'm sure being in a lot of pain. So do you think Josie's out for the rest of the tournament? If the U.S. If the US is able to get through the group, do you think he might be able to come back? That, that, that hamstring injury just dropped him. Yeah, it, it's really hard to say. Usually a hamstring like that, and he, and he looked like he, he tore it up pretty good. Even a young guy's out minimum two weeks, uh, which give, would give an outside chance that he could contribute uh, if if we get into the knockout stages. So, so let's talk about the U.S. Uh, Portugal game. How do you expect the U.S. to line up, knowing that Josie isn't there? Do they go with just Dempsey up front? Do they do they try to go with two forwards? What do you, what do you th- how do you think they're going to line up, and what do they have to do to get at least a point out of that game? Well, obviously, they, they have to limit the damage that Ronaldo can do. And many many people are of the opinion that Ronaldo for Portugal is the best player in the world, even better than Messi at this time. Uh, so to pay attention to him and make sure he doesn't really uh, blow the game wide open, which he is capable of doing with his uh, phenomenal 
dribbling skills, his speed, his great power, jumping ability in the air, his free kick ability. I mean, that, we've got our hands full with Ronaldo. Uh, they will be missing Pepe, uh, probably their most experienced uh, central defender, so that helps us a little bit. Uh, he, he received a red card in Portugal's last match. Uh, for the U.S., uh, their adjustment without Josie Altador, it could go, uh, I think, really just uh, one of two ways. Uh, you could put Chris Wondolowski uh, up there. You know, he is a target player. He's a proven goal scorer in Major League Soccer. He's not terribly experienced at this level, uh, but he does uh, play flat out that same position as the most advanced forward. Uh, or uh, you could go with a little bit more of a defensive uh, profile, clog the midfield a bit more, uh, bring everybody back, uh, and, and just leave Clint Dempsey up there more or less as your lone forward. Um, you know, that's a possibility, and that might give you more control of the midfield. And that would open the opportunity uh, for someone like Brad Davis to get into the match as a midfielder or Graham Soucy uh, to get into the match as a midfielder to help maintain some possession. Uh, Possession is huge because if we have the ball, that means Ronaldo doesn't. Uh, so I think that's going to be a key element. I, I, I personally tend to think that that's what they're going to do. I think they're going to leave leave Dempsey up there by themselves and go with the go with the five midfielders so that they can spread them wide. You think you think Davis is a is a possible opportunity to start on the outside instead of Bedoya, just maybe because of his injury, maybe because he fits that formation better. I, yeah, I think it's a possibility, I and mean, we'd love to see a St. Louis guy get in there. Brad Davis, I think, does have the confidence of Jurgen Klinsmann. Uh, Klinsmann, uh, I, I think, really likes Brad Davis's style of play and his his ability to to again keep the ball, possess the ball, take care of the ball. Uh, Graham Susie looked pretty sharp uh, when he came on as a sub uh, in in the U.S. game against Ghana. So uh, he may have the edge uh, over Davis in terms of you know who, who gets that extra midfield slot if in fact they just push. Uh, uh, Clint Dempsey up up front in in Altidore's absence. So. Ty, who do you who do you have as favorites right now? I would I would say Brazil and the Netherlands after their early experience look good. Germany looks yeah, awful well, good you know also. What? Don't count out uh, the other South American teams. Uh, very impressive have been Chile, uh, Colombia, uh, in in Uruguay. Uh, if you keep getting the scoring from Suarez, look out. So um, yeah, I mean they're, they're all contenders. Brazil's got to be the favorite, although they have not impressed. I mean, they, they, they've been disappointing. Uh, but as long as they get into the knockout stage, you know, they can forget about maybe some subpar performances in, in the group play. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I like Argentina. Uh, you know, if Messi cranks it up, you know, he can win games uh, uh, single-handedly. So, Boy, I love it's watching. an interesting tournament. But uh, I, what I've liked is the pace of play, the number of quality goals, uh, and, and just the fact that, uh, you know, no game seems that predictable. We've had some decent upsets, and it's a very surprise result. And as I mentioned, they come from behind uh, wins uh, on six occasions. That, that's really unusual uh, for World Cup group play, because in the group play, many times teams are playing very conservatively. They just want to eke into the next round, uh, not expend too much energy, and certainly not risk too much uh, going forward in the attack. Yeah, it's been an exciting, hard-hitting uh, World Cup. Real quick, because i got to take a break, uh, give us a score, U.S. versus Portugal Sunday night. Boy, uh, I'd settle for a tie uh, you know, with Ronaldo, especially if he's healthy on the field. Uh, but this is a spirited group of uh, young American players. I mean, it's not that experienced of a group, and maybe they're not that intimidated. So, you know, Dempsey and, and Bradley, they're critical uh, in terms of possession and in terms of creating attacking chances. So if Michael Bradley has a better game, and I thought he had a subpar game uh, against Ghana, if he has a better game and Dempsey can kind of deal with that broken nose and still contribute, uh, you know, we've, we've got one of the best goalkeepers in the world, Tim Howard. He's going to keep us in most games. So uh, I'm hopeful, but it's a big challenge. I mean, on paper, Portugal should beat us. They're missing their most experienced defender. Ronaldo's knee is a little bit iffy, um, and we got to fight and battle and see what happens. And there's already been several surprises in this tournament. But a win by the U.S. against Portugal, I still think for most folks, would be a surprise. Got to go. Thanks, Ty right, Kiel. Tony. Really appreciate the World Cup talk. Tony Messenger filling in for McGraw.